Joining us now, though, to share his inspiring true story is Brando Wildboy Yelovich. Now, after becoming the first person to circumnavigate the entire coast of our beautiful country on foot, he is here to tell us about his latest adventure. Let's welcome to the Harvey Norman Lounge, Wildboy. Wildboy! Yeah! <laughs> There's a theme tune in there for you somewhere. No, he um, doesn't need me to sing it, it's fine. <laughs> no, really nice to have you in the studio because you did you did the circumnavigation of the country, but you decided that wasn't quite enough. Um, so so you've do, you're have you doing something else. We've done something else. Yeah, I spent uh, 35 days walking around Stewart Island. It was a bloody good adventure, that's for sure. So when you say that, because it's, it's circumnavigating New Zealand, obviously you miss Stewart Island, it seems like a really major, huge thing. But then Stewart Island doesn't seem so big, but that's not the case, is it? Well, it, it wasn't as big, but it was uh, in a completely different sense, probably one of the most challenging places I've ever been. So what happens though when you get to a spot, if you're trying to walk around it and there's just like a sheer cliff face, do you just hack your way through? Well, how do you do that? Well, have you ever read that book like, you can't go over it, you can't go yes. under it, we we'll have to go through it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, you got to go through it. Wow. <laughs> so tell us what actually, so let's take it right back to the beginning. What made you want to give up everything at 19 and walk the country? Uh, I was in a pretty dark place. I um, I had gone down the road of drugs and I was well off, well off track with life. So I decided that my life wasn't going to change on its own and I needed to do something about it. So I did. I uh, started walking and uh, discovering myself. And what was the hardest thing out of those 600 days? Uh, probably the time I had to spend on my own, the loneliness. And uh, that's I'm a people person, so right. to put myself out there on my own is, is always going to be the most challenging yeah. thing. Safe to say you were a little bit unprepared for this trip? For that trip? The New Zealand trip, yeah. definitely, yeah. I, um, I was naive, 19, had no, no real idea what I was doing. And I bet you you've probably found yourself, I don't know, I'm not going to ask you, but did you find yourself talking to yourself? Thinking, oh, am, yeah. I going, am I going completely crazy? <laughs> this is the turning point in my life, I'm starting to talk to myself. Yeah, no, there was lots of talking to myself, lots of uh, singing that Hallelujah song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> the top is of my lungs. a great song, though. Yeah, well, not when I sing it. <laughs> <laughs> so you did this walk around New Zealand and then you come back to Auckland and it must have been a bit of a weird time because you've done this incredible adventure. And then how did you settle back into life? Yeah, it's a really good question. I didn't really ever fit back in and, and still I don't fit in in the, in the box. I always lived outside of it, but now uh, I just keep going on adventures. That's what I do. I, uh, I enjoy the adventures. I do it to inspire others. And uh, I, kinda, I think my main message there with, with the adventures is to just do what makes you happy and live your dreams, whatever they, they may be. Yeah. What do you think was the most valuable thing you learned about yourself? Because clearly you were having you know, some troubles at the start, but then it sounds like it wasn't an easy journey. So what did you learn that actually made a difference? Uh, I think with Stewart Island, it taught me... Uh, it taught me about the power of nature and uh, the importance of spending time in it. I mean, we all drink water because it keeps us alive and we eat food because we need it. But uh, what do we do for our bodies and our souls? And uh, I believe nature's the key. It's always been there. It's always been part mm. of the world. And it's something with modern day technologies that a lot of us have become very disconnected from. Yeah, well, they reckon now there's research that says if you if you walk in a green space in the afternoon, you sleep better that night. It does something to your brain. Um, you got hypothermia, didn't you, when you were in Stewart Island? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I, uh, I was camped in my tent on a hill uh, that I shouldn't have been on. <laughs> I... Uh, I headed up the hill, it was blowing, it was windy, it was hailing and uh, I got so cold that I, I reached quite a severe state of hypothermia where I stopped shivering and I wasn't thinking properly but luckily I realised that this, is, this had happened so I uh, hopped inside my survival bag for the first time ever and somehow managed to get myself warm uh, but that, that's like only the half of it. Once you, you're in that stage of hypothermia, it lasts for days. You don't just come right the next day or come right once you're warm. Your body's permanently colder for, for quite some time. Mm. So everything you learn, you've put into this book. Who should read it? Oh, it's, it's for anyone. Uh, it's for the armchair adventurer or uh, kids would love it. Uh, teenagers would 
just get kicks from it. It's a, it's a modern day survival guide in there too, gear list. It's got everything everything you could want. So you can send your teacher, your, your teenager out around the world or around the country with a survival <laughs> guide. Excellent. Excellent. That's not a bad idea, Brando. Um, thank you so much for coming in. You know, what an inspiration pleasure. you are. That is awesome. Yeah. I'm pleased you learned stuff, you know, as well about yourself and clearly it's paid off. Thanks yeah. so much. Good adventures. To read about his epic adventure, Wild Boy to the Edge and Back, it's available now at all good bookstores. Yeah, thank you so much.